This video will cover some example problems related to intermolecular forces. This video is meant to be watched after the previous video about intermolecular forces concepts. Please watch this previous video now if you have not already done so, or some of the concepts discussed in this video might become confusing. What is the strongest intermolecular forces that are needed to convert each of these molecules from a liquid to a gas? CS2 H2O C5H12 CH2O. Let us go through each of these molecules one by one. Carbon disulfide has polar bonds because carbon and sulfur have differing electronegativities. But carbon disulfide is nonpolar because it is a symmetrical linear molecule. Since it is nonpolar, the only kind of intermolecular force it can have is London dispersion forces. H2O also has polar bonds because hydrogen and oxygen have differing electronegativities. But H2O is polar because it is a bent molecule. So it has dipole-dipole interactions, but it also has hydrogen bonding because it contains a hydrogen attached to an oxygen. The strongest intermolecular force is hydrogen bonding. C5H12, or pentane, is a nonpolar carbon chain. This is because carbon and hydrogen do not have different enough electronegativities to make this a polar bond. Since it is a nonpolar, the only kind of intermolecular force it can have is London dispersion forces. CH2O is a polar molecule with a structure where the carbon is singly bonded to the two hydrogens and doubly bonded to the oxygen. Since it is a polar molecule, it will exhibit dipole-dipole interactions. But what about hydrogen bonding? The hydrogen atoms are not connected to the oxygen atom in the molecule, so therefore it will not exhibit hydrogen bonding in converting from a liquid to a gas. Rank the following molecules in order from lowest boiling point to highest boiling point and explain your reasoning. A. Neon, Argon, Krypton, Xenon. B. HF, HCl, HBr, HI, C, CH3, SH, CH3, OH, CH3, CH3, CH2O, D, CF4, KCL, CH3, 
CH2OH. CH3OCH3. Boiling point increases as intermolecular forces increase. Let's consider each letter separately. For letter A, we have four noble gases. They are all atoms, and the only type of intermolecular force they have is London dispersion forces. What determines the strength of London dispersion forces was discussed in the previous video. Please watch this video now if you have not done so before. The strength of the London dispersion forces increase as the number of electrons increase because they are more likely to be distributed unevenly or polarized. The atom neon has 10 electrons, argon has 18 electrons, krypton has 36 electrons, and xenon has 54 electrons. So they are listed in order of increasing boiling point in the question. Neon has a lower boiling point than argon, which has a lower boiling point than krypton, which has a lower boiling point than xenon. For letter B, we have four hydrogen halides, or acids. They are all polar molecules because the electronegativity difference between hydrogen and fluorine, hydrogen and chlorine, hydrogen and bromine, and hydrogen and iodine is great. They all have dipole-dipole interactions and London dispersion forces. So you would think that the order of the boiling points would be determined by the London dispersion forces that each molecule has, and be the order of the increasing amount of electrons like we did in part A. But you would be incorrect. One of these molecules is special because it exhibits hydrogen bonding. Hydrogen fluoride has a hydrogen atom attached to a fluorine atom, so it will have the highest boiling point. The other molecule's boiling point order will be determined by the order of the increasing amount of electrons. Chlorine has 17 electrons, bromine has 35 electrons, and iodine has 53 electrons. So the order of increasing boiling points is HCl has a lower boiling point than HBr, which has a lower boiling point than HI, which has a lower boiling point than HF. For letter C, we have molecules that all have approximately the same molar mass. So for this answer, we are not going to depend on our increasing amount of electrons theory. Instead, we need to inspect each molecule one by one. CH3SH is a polar molecule, as is CH3OH. The only difference between these two molecules is that CH3OH exhibits hydrogen bonding because the hydrogen is attached to an oxygen. CH3CH3 CH3 is a nonpolar molecule, and CH2O is a polar molecule that does not have a hydrogen attached to an oxygen. The order we know so far is that CH3CH3 CH3 has the lowest boiling point, and CH3OH has the highest boiling point. How do we assign the other two? We will use the fact that molecules have London dispersion forces, and that the two in the middle boiling point order will be determined by which one is bigger. CH3SH is bigger than CH2O, so the order is CH3CH3 CH3 has a lower boiling point than CH2O, which has a lower boiling point than CH3SH, which has a lower boiling point than CH3OH. For letter D, 
Again, we need to inspect each molecule one by one. CF4 has polar bonds, but it is a nonpolar molecule because it is a symmetrical tetrahedral shape. KCl is an ionic compound. Both CH3, CH2OH, and CH3OCH3 are polar molecules, and they have the exact same molar mass, as they are isomers. The order we know so far is that CF4 has the lowest boiling point, and KCl has the highest boiling point. How do we assign the other two? We will use the fact that only one of these molecules has a hydrogen attached to an oxygen, CH3CH2OH, and will exhibit hydrogen bonding. The other molecule has the oxygen attached to the two carbons, CH3OCH3. So the order is CF4 has a lower boiling point than CH3. OCH3, which has a lower boiling point than CH3, CH2, OH, which has a lower boiling point than KCl, which has a higher energy of separation, converting one mole of water from liquid to gas, or breaking the OH bonds of one mole of water. This question has to do with intermolecular versus intramolecular forces. If you convert one mole of water from a liquid to a gas, you will be breaking the hydrogen bonds between the water molecules. Therefore, you will be disrupting intermolecular forces. If you break the OH bonds in one mole of water, you will be breaking covalent bonds. Therefore, you will be disrupting intramolecular forces. We said in the previous intermolecular forces video that intramolecular forces are stronger than intermolecular forces. Please watch this video now, if you have not already done so. In fact, the energy to separate water in both of these scenarios is 41 0.1 kilojoules versus 930 kilojoules respectively. So it takes a lot more energy to break the OH bonds. Water is a very special substance because like we said in the first video, its liquid density is higher than its solid density. This gives water some unique properties such as Ice floats on top of water, which is the reason that ice skating and hockey are possible on lakes and is also the reason why fish do not die in the winter. Water is also a unique substance because it exhibits strong hydrogen bonding between molecules. For this reason, water has high surface tension which means that water beads up on some surfaces and that some bugs can walk on water. Cohesive forces exist in water because water resists separation. Water will beat up on wax paper because water has strong cohesion, which gathers them into large droplets due to water molecules dislike for the wax paper surrounding. Water also exhibits capillary action, which is when water will flow into a narrow space or up a polar substrate in opposition to external forces such as gravity. The reason that water flows up a polar substrate and beads up upon wax paper is because like dissolves like. Water is polar so it will dissolve polar or ionic substrates. Wax paper is a nonpolar surface, so the water will not mix with this substrate.
Place the following in order from most soluble to least soluble in ammonia. CH2Cl2 CH4 H2O First, we need to figure out what kind of molecule ammonia is. What is ammonia? Ammonia is NH3. If you draw the Lewis structure for ammonia, you will see that it has polar bonds and that it is a polar molecule. Also, since the nitrogen has hydrogen attached to it, this molecule can also form hydrogen bonds. So polar or ionic compounds will be soluble in ammonia and nonpolar molecules will not be soluble in ammonia. Let us go through the molecules that they gave us one by one to determine if they are polar or not. For CH2Cl2, there is not much electronegativity difference between carbon and hydrogen, but there is a moderate electronegativity difference between carbon and chlorine. Therefore, this is a polar molecule, but it cannot hydrogen bond because it does not have hydrogen covalently bonded to a nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine atom. So CH2Cl2 is soluble in ammonia. CH4 is a symmetrical tetrahedral molecule. And since there is not much difference in electronegativity between carbon and hydrogen, it is nonpolar. Therefore, CH4 is insoluble in ammonia. H2O is a polar molecule because it is not symmetrical. Rather, it is bent. Also, water can form hydrogen bonds because it has a hydrogen covalently attached to an oxygen atom. So, water is the most soluble in ammonia. Therefore, the correct order is H2O is more soluble in ammonia than CH2Cl2, which is more soluble in ammonia than CH4.